Hello everyone, welcome to The Pen Habit. I'm Matt Armstrong, and today's video review is about a pen I get asked about a lot. It is the Italics Parsons Essential. Now, Italics is a pen that is exclusively available, or mostly exclusively available, through Mr. Pen in the UK. It's manufactured by a company called PJ Ford Limited, I believe, um, and uh, and is ex- is mostly exclusively available through Mr. Pen. Now I say mostly exclusively because recently the um, the group buy site Mass Drop has had uh, some italics pens available on their site as well. Now I don't know if they're going through Mr. Pen or if they're going directly to the manufacturer. Not sure. Um, but that is the case. Now, this is an English-made pen. Uh, it's a metal-bodied pen. Fairly standard design. There's, you know, it's nothing, there's nothing particularly flashy about the design. But one of the, th- the interesting things about this pen is this is a pen, a well-made pen that is quite affordable and very much in the same price range as other entry-level pens. And when you compare something like this to something like this, you can see if you want a classic, more refined look, going with kind of a standard cigar-shaped pen with really nice furniture and nice accents is going to give you a more professional, refined, classic look than a pen like this. And these two pens cost almost the same, just about the same amount of money. So, um, the Italics Parsons Essential is a really nice pen for someone who is, they've gotten the Metropolitan, they've tried the Lamy Safari, they want to move up, but they still want to stay around $50 US, or as it's, uh, it's 32 dollars and 32 pounds and 50 pence in the UK. Um, and because you have to order it from the UK, that just, you want to keep in mind the conversion rates. But right now, um, at the time of recording, that's just shy of $50 US. So let's go through the design here. So it's, as I mentioned, a metal body pen with a lacquer finish. Comes in black, blue, green, burgundy, and amber. This is the amber finish, and it's kind of got this nice tortoiseshell lacquer over the top of it. Now, I am, generally speaking, not a huge fan of lacquered pens. This is the Jinhao X450. And I I like Jinhao pens quite a bit. Um, But I find that lacquered pens... um, if they're not well lacquered, can, you know, the finish will come off, um, and they get chipped and easily dinged about. That's not a huge deal when you're dealing with a $7 pen, but it becomes a little bit more of a deal when you become, when you start dealing with a a $50 pen. Now, fortunately, the lacquer on this feels rock solid. It feels thick and robust and well adhered. I don't think you're going to see a lot of flaking of the finish on this pen, unless you're just really really hard on your pens. In which case, sorry, there's, <laughs> in which case, get yourself a stonewashed Caveco uh, All Sport and call, your, call it good, because that's about what you're going to, you know, that's about the only way, if you're really hard on your pens, to not damage the finish. Um, the clip attaches via a small slit in the cap wall. It is very stiff, very, very stiff. You have to apply a lot of pressure to put it down. It's got this nice rope braid um, accent, which I think makes a very classy statement. It's, it's embossed metal and then it, it's, uh, it, you know, enameled with this black on the interior here to give it a nice raised finish. Really, I think, classy looking design there. The rest of the cap is, un- or rest of the barrel is unadorned. Very smooth, um, almost glassy finish. Very glossy. Um, I do like the tortoise shell style, you know, the browns and the ambers and the yellows kind of combined together. Now, I will try to color correct this um, either in the photos that I show or on the video, but looking at the monitor that I've got right here, um, this is looking much more sickly yellow puce <laughs> than it actually is. It's much browner. So I don't know if the, this monitor is not not correctly color corrected, but I will try to correct the video. And if not, over this talking, I will be showing you a, a photo that is color corrected and, and gives an accurate indication of the color of the pen. Uh, the cap comes off with one full twist and to expose a small bicolor steel nib. This is a, um, a number five size nib, I believe. It says italics and then uh, this is a broad nib. 
one of the other neat things about these italics pens, well, before we get to that, um, and then there's a, a section here. Now, the section, I think, is enameled metal because you've got the, the tenon here is metal. I believe this is metal as well. And then the nib unit kind of screws in to the section as well. Section's kind of tapered. It's a little narrower than I generally like, but it's not too bad. Um, it uses standard international converters or cartridges and does take long converters. But because this is a metal-bodied pen, uh, you cannot use it as an eyedropper. And you'll notice there are metal threads on the inside here, uh, but these are very smooth, some of the smoothest metal threads I've ever used before. Very well machined and, and well polished. And I should also point out the cap, the threads on the inside of the cap here, it's, I think what they've done is they have lined the entire metal cap with uh, a plastic cap liner. I'm pretty sure these are plastic threads. Um, but you can see this black lining go all the way down. It gives the pen some heft and makes it feel very, very smooth. Tight threads, again, um, really nice finish that you don't often get um, from metal-bodied pens. A lot of times metal-bodied pens use pop-top caps, um, which I'm not a fan of generally, or um, or the metal-on-metal th metal threads tend to get squeaky, which I'm really not a fan of. So they've taken a lot of care to build a really solid well-made metal-bodied pen here. This is probably one of the my favorite metal-bodied pens I've used, aside from the Faber-Castell Loom, which I reviewed back in season two. So what I started to say earlier is one of the nice things about the um, italics pens is the variety of nibs that are available. So in addition to the standard fine, medium, and broad nibs, you can get unique grinds that aren't E often available from other pens, especially in this price range. So you can get um, stub nibs and italic in both fine, medium, and broad. So if you want to try a stub but you don't want like a 1.1 millimeter, you could get a, a fine stub or a fine italic. Uh, if you wanted to try oblique nibs, they have both left foot and right foot oblique nibs and in medium and broad, and they have medium and broad oblique italics and round oblique nibs, um, which is another variation that you just don't see very often. And if you really want to go nuts, you can spend a fair chunk of money and get an 18 karat gold nib in medium as well. So there's lots and lots of nib options and you can buy the nibs separately. So this, for instance, is a nib unit that is a medium oblique nib unit which is really cool because, A, I've, you can't get medium obliques unless you have them custom ground anymore. And, uh, but I got one, and they send a whole section and another converter and the nib already. All you have to do is unscrew one from the pen and screw another one in, and you're good to go. Um, so I'll be doing a little bit of writing with both of these, um, but I prefer the broad over the medium oblique, and I'll explain that when we get to the writing sample. Okay, so let's look at comparables here. So... This is the Parsons Essential by Italics. Here's the Pilot Metropolitan. So it's a little bit longer and a little bit wider. Quite a bit heavier and more, more robust. Uh, here is the Lamy All-Star by comparison's sake. About the same length, but again, a classic look, kind of contemporary, and I think rather childish look. Um, I'm sure I'll get angry comments about that, but... Everyone knows I'm not a huge fan of the Safari All-Star Vista design. It's just not my thing. And then here is the uh, Jinhao X450, um, which I, I don't know if this comes through in the video or not, but to me, this just looks much nicer than this. This, there's nothing wrong with the Jinhao. They're good pens. I like them quite a bit, but if I were to put them side by side and say which one looks like it is a nicer pen, this would be the one I'd pick every time. So, and then comparing it to some larger but also well-known pens, here's the Mont Blanc 149, the Pelican M1000, and the Pelican M800 for comparison's sake. So, um, you know, it's, it's not a short pen necessarily, but it is not a, a wide pen. It's about the same length as an M800. 
Okay. And measurements, we're looking at 140.6 millimeters in length when it's capped. Uncapped, it's a touch on the short side at 124.5, but if you've got smaller hands or you you hold your, you know, your pen a little bit further up like that. I tend to hold mine more like this, so it, it ends up being a little, feeling a little short for me. Um, so 124.5 there, and then it does post, and that plastic cap liner helps it post very, very securely um, at 161.4. And I write with this pen posted. It's very nicely balanced in the hand. The cap is quite heavy on its own, um, but the way the cap falls in my hand and the way I end up holding the pen, where I grip the pen, um, this is a pen I actually prefer to use posted as opposed to non-posted. The section is a little narrow. It's about 10 millimeters in the middle of the section. Um, I usually end up holding it up here right on the threads, unfortunately, because this, if the section were you know a few millimeters longer, I think I'd be okay. But um, because this is such a short nib, I end up having to hold the pen a little bit higher up on the grip here. And uh, yeah, so, so I usually hold the threads. Fortunately, these threads are plastic covered and they're quite, uh, quite smooth, so I don't notice that too much. Widest point of the barrel is 12.8 millimeters and the widest point of the cap is 14 millimeters. And because, being a metal body pen, it is going to be a touch on the heavy side, so 21 grams uncapped, and you can add an extra 16 grams for the cap alone to bring you up to 37 grams uh, capped and po or capped or posted. So it's not a featherweight pen, but it's not, you know, you're not looking at a, a 50 mil, a 50 gram, like Jinhao 1, 159 or anything like that. So, uh, very nice pen, very well made, good fit and finish. Um, but I did run into a few problems with the writing. So let's go ahead and do the writing. I'll talk you through what I found. Um, and then, uh, then we'll wrap up. So here is how this pen writes now. This is the italics. Parsons Essential. We have a steel bicolor broad nib. And I'll also do a bit of writing with the oblique medium in a bit. And the ink for this nib is Diatramentus Aubergine. Okay, here I'm gonna go ahead and post the pen for my preferred writing style and do the quote. E-N-E-R. There we go. Okay, so the broad nib is uh, a western broad. Um, it's, n it's not terribly wet. It's not the wettest pen in the world. It's actually a little on the dry side. And uh, detrimentous inks tend to be wet inks. So this is, uh, you know, an aubergine's a wet ink. This ink does tend, or this pen does tend to write on the dry side. Now, I have not made any adjustments to it. Um, I did ink this up the first time with a different, a couple of different inks before doing a thorough cleaning. Now, if you're new to fountain pens and this is one of the first videos you're doing, generally it's good practice to always clean out your pens. You know, run a little dish soap, uh, some water with a few drops of dish soap in it or some pen flush through your pen the first time. Clean out the oils and the manufacturing residues. Um, and, and to get to get the best experience, let the pen dry and then ink it up. I'm not that patient. To, to quote a popular internet video, ain't nobody got time for that. Um, so <laughs> most of the time, I get the pen, I pull it out of the box, I fill it with ink, and I start writing. And nine times out of 10, that works just fine. If I have a, a problem with ink flow, the first thing I do after that is empty the ink out, do a thorough cleaning. If I can, disassemble the pen, put it all back together, and then try again. Um, 
the nib on this broad nib on the italics Parsons Essentials is a really lovely smooth nib. It's it's dry though, um, and as a result, it has a bit of feedback that I don't think would be there if the ink flow was a little bit more robust. So you'll notice, you know, I'm just not getting a lot of of ink being laid down on the paper. This is not, you know, if you press down on the pen, you can get a little, you can spread the tines a bit and get a bit, bit of ink flow, but I don't like having to write pressing down on a steel nib. Um, that's not the way they should be, you know, that's not the way they should write. You should be able to, to get, if you want juiciness, you should be able to get it without having to put a lot of pressure on the nib. Um, the biggest problem I had with the nib, though, was ink starvation. So I could write for about two pages with no problems at all. And then the ink would start to get a little bit drier and a little bit drier. It never stopped, but it would get to the point that it was uncomfortably dry. And I'd start to see a little bit of hard starts here and there. Um, if I went and primed the feed, uh, you know, just twisted the converter a little bit, primed the feed, it would write for two or three more pages, no problem. Um, and if I, or if I'd set it down for three or four minutes and come back, it would, it would write no problem. Um, I've tried four or five different inks in the pen. I've had the same problem with both nibs and every ink I've tried. Some inks are worse than others. So if you've got like an iron gall ink or something that tends to run dry, th at least my experience with the two nibs I've had so far is it's not going to be a great experience for you. Um, this is a pen that will want a wetter running ink. So you know, Private Reserve Tanzanite, which is kind of known as the laxative of inks. Um, Aurora Black. If you like black, Aurora Black runs generally t pretty wet. Um, some of the less saturated inks might run a little bit better, but you'll probably, probably want to stay away from the iron galls or, you know, the highly saturated inks with particulate and that sort of thing. Um, because this pen just doesn't seem to like long writing sessions with no breaks in between. Good note-taking pen, good signature signing pen. Um, if if you take if the way you take notes is I jot something down here or there, um, maybe a good desk pen. Probably not the best pen for taking lecture notes or writing a long letter or writing a, a, a diary or a, a, a story or something like that. Um, and that was the case with both of the nibs. Very smooth, um, no hard starting, no skipping, none of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I could write with no pressure. It would just, it would kind of crap out on me after, after th two, three, sometimes four pages of writing. And then it would just kind of start to dry up and I'd have to prime the feed. That tends to be a fairly standard experience with a lot of international standard cartridge converter pens. And this is where, this is another video in which I eat my words because I've always said, I wish more, more companies used standard international. The more pens I use, the more I'm glad they don't because I think Standard International just, there's not enough of an opening for air to get back into the converter, so it starts to build up a little bit of a vacuum in there. I think that's what's happening with this pen. Now I'm going to go ahead and swap out the broad nib for the medium oblique and show you a little bit about that nib. Okay. So if you watch my video review of the Newton Pens Sumter, uh, you'll notice that I, I mentioned that I like oblique nibs, um, and part of it is the way I hold the pen. I tend to hold the pen at kind of an angle to the paper, and then when I put it down, I, I roll the pen a little bit. Um, I like oblique nibs a lot. I've tried a lot of them. Most of them I'm able to find a good sweet spot for. I had a lot of problems with the grind on this nib. Um, it's very, very sensitive about the angle at which it's held, and I was getting scratchiness almost no matter how I did it. Sometimes it would fail to write, I'd get hard starts, stuff like that. I've never had the same problems with an oblique nib as I have with this one. And so I, I generally, I'll try to show you here, I tr generally try to balance my pen on my knuckle right here. The only way I can get this to write nicely is if I balance it down there in the web of my thumb. So here, and I'll slide this up a little bit, the angle is wrong and I get sc scratchiness. Um, you know, it's, it, if I put it down here, I think, and what I think it is, is the angle of this nib is steeper. The angle of this oblique is steeper than the angle of, um, 
other obliques that I've used, it really does not like being written with straight on. Um, they, this, this could be smoothed a little bit more. So this is a, a kind of an, an unusual oblique grind for me. It's not a bad grind, and if I do find the, the sweet spot, it works out well. Um, let me, again, pull the dark background up so you can see this against that background. Um, but it, I don't know, it's, this, oh, this particular oblique does not fit my grip style particularly well. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, if you want to try the oblique, Different oblique, different obliques are ground in different ways and different angles. Um, this one didn't really sing for me, um, but it's still, you know, if you want to try an oblique, it's not very expensive to buy an additional nib unit. You know, I'd, I'd say give it a go, and if if you don't like it, you're out five, ten bucks. It's not the end of the world. But if you like it, then you know, then you found something for not too much. So overall. I like the Parsons Essential. I wish I could like it a little bit more. I like the design. I love this little, this, you know, rope braid band here. Um, I like the, the finish. I love the fit of the pieces, the smoothness of the nib. It feels solid. It feels robust. It feels well made. I just, I could not get past the ink starvation issues I had with both of the nib units. And I cleaned them both thoroughly. I even disassembled them and ran them through the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, but both of them t tended to starve after two, three pages of writing. So if the way you use pens is in short jots, and you know, I'm taking a quick note here, I'm signing a check there, I'm filling out a form here, I think this is a wonderful pen to use. It looks nice, it will look nice sitting in your pocket. Um, it's very well made. It will last you a lifetime. If you're the kind of person who takes your pen and sits down and pens four or five pages in a row, just know you'll probably have to, at some point, take the section off, prime the feed, and, and screw it all back together. At least that has been my experience on the two nibs that I have tried. I know other people, including my good friend Stephen Brown, just sing praise after praise after praise for this pen. Um, that was not my experience with these. I don't dislike them. Uh, I, just wanted, I just wanted to share my experience so you know that that's what I saw when I use these pens for extended writing. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or comments, if you've had a different experience with your Parsons Essential, please leave that in the comments either on penhabit.com or on YouTube. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can email me directly penhabit at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.